Quiet by Susan Cain, the power of introverts in a world that can't stop talking. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel and I want to make self-growth normal. If you want to make self-growth normal because I don't want to do it alone, then make sure to smash that like button. How can quiet be so strong and what else can it do that we don't really give it credit for? She brings up all the great experiments, theories, works of art, books, companies, etc. brought to the world by introverts. And at least in the beginning of this book, there is just something that I, I just, I, I, I don't think I resonate with it. It's not that I disagree with it, but I don't, I don't resonate with it. The way this author talks about introversion makes it sound like introversion is a country surrounded by other countries that want to delete it from existence, and I'm not entirely sure I'm exaggerating here. She explains that there's like this huge cultural preference, especially in America, for extroversion to introversion. For me, introversion and I... <sighs> We go way back. Maybe you could say the same thing about yourself. People and people have told me that I that I don't seem like an introvert because I seem very, you know, outgoing and excited in these videos, and that makes sense, but I don't think those people know that I only film these videos when no one else is in this basement. <laughs> and I prefer to keep it that way. When I was in first grade, I cried on picture day because I didn't want a picture of my face to be taken. Anyone could look at it whenever they wanted and I didn't. I also used my introversion repeatedly throughout my childhood as a justification for not going after what I want. Maybe this is just my experience talking, but I'm convinced there's a degree to which knowing yourself and meeting your own needs as an individual is more important than whatever system or environment you're in. As long as it seems up front like you can't change that system or environment. And that's because everyone I've learned about who has changed the operations of any environment effectively and sustainably experienced a lot of change on the inside beforehand. And this book doesn't really seem to highlight that all that much until the end. Is there that much of a cultural preference our country, let alone world? has for extroversion? That's what I'm wondering. If there is, I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure the author really backs it up that much. To think that most people would prefer to th think about, associate with, and or be around an extrovert, it sounds like a strongly held observation to me for some reason, and not much of an empowering one. Maybe it's just the way she puts this down. Maybe it's just the way I pick it up. Maybe it's both. In this review, I'm gonna talk about the different chapters, what I liked about the book, because there is there was a bit of that I liked about the book, what I think could have been different, and because I had pretty mixed feelings about this book, I'm gonna look at the top positive and negative helpful audible reviews that I could find. That really kind of stood out to me that I have something to say about. Right off the bat, I was taken aback by the author's ability to like tell a story of someone making huge self-improvements and then being like, oh yeah, actually, this person was, uh, I don't know, Dale Carnegie or Malcolm X. The author refers repeatedly to not the cult, but the culture of personality. She compares and contrasts collaboration in groups with working alone and causes and what causes one of those to fail when the, where the other doesn't. I like how she combines studies of what's effective and ineffective and why with, for example, a like synopsis of a specific community's unique habits and behaviors like the Harvard Business School reminded me kind of like something that Daniel Coyle would talk about in the Culture Code, but also something like Malcolm Gladwell would talk about in like, I don't know, Outliers. And I hope that sounds like I'm saying a lot because Malcolm Gladwell, I mean, he's probably one of my favorite nonfiction writers. Is temperament destiny? I don't know, I forgot <laughs> what temperament meant until this point in the book when I looked it up. Temperament is a person's or animal's nature as it permanently affects their behavior. Hashtag bars. In psychology, it's consistent individual differences in behavior that are biologically based and are relatively independent of learning. Systems of values and attitudes. Using the K, what is it, the Kagan, the Kagan, <laughs> Kagan temperament theory, the author explores how much of the realization of introversion is nature versus nurture. It's explored how the rubber band can stretch. I like what she says about sweet spots, places where you feel most comfortable and productive. Maybe it's just for personal reasons. There are just things in this book that I just couldn't, I couldn't really find myself just understanding that much. I spent three years in Pennsylvania, three whole years, obsessively, no relationships, very, very, very little time spent with any friends. I would wake up and go to work two blocks down for eight hours and then run. I would jolt back to the apartment and work on music. Nothing but music, right? On weekends, it was like 18 hour days of music for three years. And I did the math and this is over 13,000 hours. I spent happy and in solitude. It's different now though. I don't even make music anymore. Something tells me I'm probably gonna start again at some point in the future, but there's not much of a sweet spot at all now. And I'm somehow 
happier, more fulfilled, I'm making more money, and my YouTube channel has never grown so fast. So I like the sweet spot, but something is gravely unsettling about it. For me, maybe for other people, it is probably the degree to which feeling is involved in her emphasis on its importance. And yet, the way I see it, the topic of this book is bold. The history of knowledge and the science of personality is something that you could hurl all the studies that you want at the all the all the studies you want at the reader and listener. You can utter all the stories you want to support your viewpoint, but the science she presents here just sounds so not yet 100% conclusive. At the same time, looking at successful introverts and why they are successful, let's just take a wild guess here that the author wrote this book to simultaneously inform and empower introverts. Wouldn't it make the most sense to write a book examining specifically what the most powerful introverts have in common? From habits to self-talk to financial decisions to approaches in networking to methods of relationship management. I don't know, when I thought of the book, Ideally, I thought of a book about that. And again, three quarters of the book, roughly, doesn't really talk nearly as much about that as I, I think it could. In the chapter, Soft Power, the author says, extroverts get better grades than introverts in elementary school, but introverts outperform extroverts in high school and college. At the university level, introversion predicts academic performance better than cognitive ability. One study has tested 141 students' knowledge of 20 subjects from art to astronomy and to statistics and found that introverts knew more than extroverts about every single one of them. I'm not saying this is false, but if you're an extrovert and you want to be the best student, for example, what are you supposed to do about this? Like, is there no hope for you or something? <laughs> I'll address this in my review of the negative review that I review. <laughs> in the chapter, when should you act more extroverted than you really are? In this chapter, the validity of personality science, fixed personalities, traits, etc. It's addressed so impressively and thoroughly that I, I just wish she placed it far, far earlier into the book for all the cynics. Anyone wondering, well, what about X, Y, and Z? Their concerns are addressed ahead of time. And I would ask why the final part of the book is the only one with any any, any tips, strategies, etc. that really focus on solutions, but Tony Robbins says that, what, success is 80% psychology and 20% mechanics? She talks about how to handle differences in personality traits and relationships. She talks about how to parent introverts in ways that work for them, problems that introverts run into while raising other introverts, <laughs> fitting in with other students, tackling stage fright. Dude, there are probably conferences people are running on this for thousands and thousands of dollars a ticket. This is information people will pay a lot to find when they understand how important it is. By the way, the dedication was fire. It was great, it was touching, but right after the note on the words introvert and extrovert, why was that placed at the very, very end of the book and not the very, very beginning of the book? What did the positive reviews say and what did the negative reviews say and do I agree with them? A five-star review by Joshua Kim, who by the way is skeptical of the, the, the validity of personality categorization, Myers-Briggs, etc. He says a lot of things, but one stood out. The author believes our efforts to construct schools and workplaces around extroverts are counterproductive to our organizations and damaging to individuals. So we need to design classrooms and workplaces that honor the needs of our colleagues for quiet focus and intensive solo pursuits. I don't agree. I don't disagree. I don't. In fact, it sounds ideal, but how would you even approach that? <laughs> A one-star review by Victoria, again, the further you get into this book, this does dip significantly. Statistics full of why extroverts aren't as smart, productive, important. I feel like you can raise up introverts without insulting extroverts. It makes me sad, it does, when authors just have this huge difference between the first chapter or two and the rest of the book. After the introduction, the author does focus a lot, and understandingly so, I mean, based on just the title of the book, on the empowerment of, of introverts. But when she compares it and says, you know, well, the extroverts didn't do that well at this. I looked it up. She has not written any other books. And if she wrote a book, another one, called like, Aloud, The Power of Extroverts in a World That Can't Stop Commenting or Writing or Typing or something, 
That'd be great. Quotes. If you have a big husky inferiority complex, you're about as lucky as you could hope to be, provided you have a backbone along with it. Exhortations to imagine the audience in the nude don't help nervous speakers. Naked lions are just as dangerous as elegantly dressed ones. It's not that I'm smart, it's that I stick to problems longer. When people ask me why I'm not talking, I'm the one they're talking to. Direction 1. I recommend this book for anyone who does not understand introverts. I recommend the last quarter of the book for anyone who understands introverts introverts, but doesn't understand how to work with us and live with and raise us effectively. I'm not an extrovert myself at all. So I really wish that there were a book like this for extroverts, but I do think at some points this book does get pretty like decently one-sided and it makes sense why, but at the same time, I don't know, like, you know, direction two. If you like this book, I recommend checking out Social by Matthew D. Lieberman. It's a very, very different book from Quiet, but I think it fills a decent amount of voids in Quiet's logic. For more stories of successful introverts, Elon Musk by Ashley Vance and The Snowball, the biography, the Warren Buffett bio from Alice Schroeder. Those are so, they're excellent biographies to check out, okay? Quiet by Susan Cain. There's a link in the description if you guys wanna check it out and read the reviews. That and all the other books that I mentioned in this video if you wanna check those out too. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it, but hey, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, because I don't get why people watch this far into my reviews and they don't subscribe, but if you have subscribed and you wanna turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to get a notification every time I drop a new video, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.